So let's talk about Windows 10, shall we? I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com. It's been a busy week in the Windows 10 world with lots of different kinds of news coming out. Naturally, I've been getting lots of questions about Windows 10 for some time, and especially this week. This week, Microsoft announced that Windows 10 will be available on July the 29th. Exactly what that means? Well, and exactly what will happen on that date, it's kind of hard to tell, it's not clear. But that will get clearer, of course, as we get closer to the date. At the same time, literally the same day that the announcement was made, Windows Update installed a little icon. You can see it up here. That little icon on the Windows 7 and Windows 8 taskbar notification area offered to get Windows 10. It scared a few people since it kind of acted like spyware almost. It just sort of showed up unannounced and unrequested as part of, like I said, Windows Update. Now, as it turns out, it's legitimate. It's a little annoying maybe, but it's basically just marketing and unfortunately not very good marketing at that, but it's safe. I've actually written up an article on it. You can see the URL here. And it's something worth checking into if the, if the little icon bothers you at all. Now, I've been playing with Windows 10 off and on for the past couple of months using the technical preview. I wanted to share just a few of my impressions. To begin with, as I've written in a previous article on Ask Leo, I don't want your experience with Windows 8 to adversely color your experience with Windows 10. Yes, Windows 10 is a follow-on to 8, that much is clear, but they seem to have learned a number of lessons from the Windows 8 PR disaster. Windows 8 was more of a political and PR mistake than a technical one. It's actually a fine operating system in my opinion, but too many things were just handled poorly or weren't completely thought out. Windows 10 actually addresses a number of the common concerns, and I'm pretty hopeful that it'll succeed in ways that Windows 8 did not. It's funny, if you follow the every other operating system way of thinking, then Windows 98, good. Windows ME, not good. Windows XP, very good. Windows Vista, not so much. Windows 7, good and solid. Many people are happy on it right now. Windows 8, as I said, a PR nightmare at least, and many, many people are quite upset with it. Windows 10 falls in the good side of that sequence, so hopefully it'll be something that'll be around for a while and make a lot of people happy. I will say this. The encouragement in Windows 10 to sign in using your Microsoft account instead of a local machine account is still there. Uh, it means signing in using a Hotmail account or an Outlook.com account or anything that you can out log into a Microsoft account with. Um, if you can log into Outlook.com using it, it's a Microsoft account. That's still there, pretty much like Windows 8.1. Now, I went all in in my tests. So I went ahead and signed in using my Microsoft account in my Windows 10 preview. And, you know, it's really not that horrible. There are some pros and cons to doing it, and some features definitely work more cleanly when you're set up with a Microsoft account as your login ID. Now, naturally, I strongly recommend that you take all the steps you can to protect your Microsoft account, including setting up a recovery code beforehand, I've got an article on that, and enabling two-factor authentication. And I recommend that whether or not you use your Microsoft account as your Windows 10 login. Your Microsoft account, regardless of whether you use it for logging in or not, is just too important. And I see too many people locked out on a daily basis simply because they didn't prepare. And no, if you enable two-factor authentication, that does not mean you need to use two-factor authentication every time you want to log into your machine. It's pretty much just like logging into Outlook.com or any other Microsoft service. Lo uh, email address becomes your login ID and then your password for that account is there. In terms of new features, well, you already know that the start menu is back. 
It's somewhat different than the Windows 7 start menu and is a vast improvement over the Windows 8 start menu. But in the long run, it's much more flexible and customizable than either of the two. And to be fair, I do expect Classic Shell to keep on working in Windows 10. So if you want your Windows 7 style start menu or your Windows XP style start menu, or heck, even your Windows NT style start menu, Classic Shell is probably going to be there for you to do exactly that. OneDrive appears to be back and working the way we expect as opposed to whatever the heck it was they did with it in Windows 8.1. I still don't quite understand. The Spartan browser? Meh. To be honest, I'm not really sure why we need the Spartan browser. I'm very happy with Chrome as my primary browser on all my platforms. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Obviously, I'm going to play with it. Um, and as a web developer, of course, I need to make sure that Ask Leo and my other sites all work on Spartan, which they do. I wasn't able to test Cortana, and I, she's really, really interesting to me. Unfortunately, and the reason I wasn't able to test it is because of my virtual machine environment not supporting my microphone for whatever reason. I didn't bother to try and figure it all out. The short answer, though, is that the typed search equivalent of Cortana worked very well, as well as the Windows 8 search. Now, yes, there are issues, decisions, really. For example, there's no more Media Center. Microsoft has simply canceled the Media Center project. It's gone. Also, those who end up with the home edition of Windows 10 won't be able to defer Windows updates. They'll be installed when they're available. Users of Windows 10 Pro Edition and better will still be able to defer updates as before. To me, that's yet another reason. I always recommend not using the Home Edition, but using the Pro Edition. There are simply some features in Pro that I think most people want. Obviously, the ability to defer updates now becomes one of them, but things like remote desktop and such. But overall, my sense is that Windows 10 is very, very promising and a solid platform for the future. I'm actually looking forward to it. So the big question that, of course, everybody is asking, should you update? Today, absolutely not. It's not done. It's not released. That little icon that we saw has nothing to do with what gets installed today. That has more to do with getting it when it's finally available. It's currently not released. It's not supported unless you're a geek who knows how to evaluate it safely in like a virtual machine like I do, then you should simply wait until it's actually released. There's actually no compelling reason to update right now and every reason for the average consumer not to. So what about on July 29th? What happens then? Should you or shouldn't you? I'm going to throw out a qualified maybe, and here's why. First, if you're getting a new machine and that new machine comes with Windows 10, go for it. Absolutely. Windows 10, I believe, will be a fine operating system. You probably will like it better than Windows 8. I see no reason not to let Windows 10 be the operating system you get on a new machine. Now, I wouldn't necessarily delay getting a machine specifically to get Windows 10 on it if that's how things work out. Yes, the update will take a little while when you do it later, but it'll still be free if you do it within that first year. For existing machines, I'll actually have most of you wait a couple of months. It's more of a cautious see how it goes after it's finally released. This is really complex software, any operating system is, and it's bound to have some issues that simply aren't going to become apparent until it actually hits the streets. Assuming it's relatively solid, then after a couple of months, say September or October, if that schedule holds, of course, I'm gonna divide the world into three buckets. First of all, XP and Vista users. If your machine supports Windows 10, and if the software you need to run runs under Windows 10, I would do the upgrade. Get current, and more importantly, get supported, if for no other reason than for security. It's something you've heard us talk about a lot before.
Windows 7 and Windows 8 users, you know, if you're content with what you have, I take my time. Sort of a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of an approach. Yeah, I will probably suggest that you upgrade within that one year during which the Windows 10 upgrade will be free. But like I said, there's no rush, and it really is more about snagging the free upgrade than for any other reason. If you're an unhappy Windows 8 user, upgrade. Seriously, just do it. I'm sure there will be things about Windows 10 that will irritate you. That's probably just the nature of things. But my sense is that Windows 10 will have far fewer of them as compared to Windows 8. It's a better operating system, and I really do think they listened to a number of the issues that Windows 8 users complained about. Now, of course, in all cases, regardless of which path you're taking, definitely, absolutely, positively, before you install the upgrade, back up. Back up your entire machine. Operating systems, like I said, are incredibly complex simply because there are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of possible combinations of hardware and settings and configurations and who knows what. Somewhere, something is going to go wrong for someone. If that someone is you, then you'll be glad you had a backup you could restore to. So, what do you think? Windows 10, eager to get on it or a colossal mistake? Let me know. If you're watching this anywhere but on Ask Leo, here's the link. Visit that. Leave your comment down below the video. I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know your plans, your expectations, your concerns about Windows 10. Naturally, as always, I can't reply to every comment, but do know that they absolutely all get read. Until next time, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com. Hey, if you're watching this anywhere but on AskLeo.com, head out there and leave a comment on the video. Well, do let me know what you think. AskLeo.com is where all the action is. If you're not subscribed to my weekly newsletter, now's a great time. Each week I send out the latest answers and other interesting news and commentary to something approaching 60,000 people just like you. AskLeoBooks.com has my latest selection of books on topics ranging from backing up to internet safety and more. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com.